How are you all doing this morning? Are you all drinking your cups of coffee the way I am? <laughs> or maybe you're having a tea? Or maybe you're just having some breakfast right now? Well, I'm really glad that you're here. I'm very glad that you're here. I'm Michelle the Introvert and I welcome you all. I have a really nice project, a really nice recipe to work on today. And it is my brown bread recipe. Now I have two different kinds of yeast here. Um, a lot of you may already know this, but some of you might not. So I'll just share with you um, the different kinds of yeast. Now this one here, as you can see, it says bread machine on it. Now we're not going to be using the bread machine for this recipe. So I'm going to put this away, but I just wanted to show you that there is a difference. This one's bread machine. And this one is the kind that we're going to be using this here. It's not for the bread machine, but this is the kind that you will need for this recipe. I have taken out this nice big bowl, which you will need. This is my Tupperware bowl. I like to use that. And in the back I have measured three cups of oatmeal and also one-fourth of a cup of shortening. Now as you can hear I've got my kettle boiling. We're going to need some of that water. We're going to need three cups of boiling water to be exact. I'm going to put the three cups of oatmeal in this bowl. Next, I'm putting in the shortening. Just like that. And then my kettle, which is now boiled, I'm going to measure it to three cups. Let me just turn this around here so you can see. Three cups right there. And pour it in there. Here is what the oatmeal and the shortening and the boiling water, what that looks like when it's all mixed in. So we're going to set this aside for 20 minutes to cool down just a little bit. And while we're waiting for that to cool down, our next step will be to take out a smaller bowl, put two teaspoons of sugar, white sugar, in this bowl, and you're going to need one cup of warm water and this is where you, your yeast comes in you're going to need two teaspoons of this regular yeast to put in this bowl so I'm just going to go ahead and pour this water in like that and we're going to stir this together because it's the sugary water that activates the yeast. Okay, so now I'm going to measure two teaspoons of this yeast. And I'll just put that right in the bowl. Oops, <laughs> there we go, there's still quite a bit there, so that's good. So that's our next step, just like that, very easy. So we're going to let this stand for 10 minutes. I've 
I've been stirring this oatmeal mixture a little tiny bit and my next step will be to put two-thirds of a cup of molasses into the oatmeal mixture but also you need four teaspoons of salt to put in that oatmeal mixture so that's our next step This molasses smells so good. I just love the flavor. I love the taste of molasses. That's the third teaspoon. And this is the fourth. And then we mix it all together. Here is what the oatmeal mixture looks like when everything is all stirred in. It looks really nice and it is now lukewarm. So because it's lukewarm, we're going to put the yeast inside this bowl. And we stir it. That's our next step. Okay, so we're doing really well. We got a lot of things done so far. Now our next step is to put in two and a half cups of flour into the bowl with the oatmeal and the yeast and the molasses. And then this is an option. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, if you want to, you can put in one cup of raisins. But if you don't want raisins in your bread, don't worry about it. It's just optional. In goes the flour. And in goes the raisins. And I have my mixer and I'm going to mix that all in. Here's what it looks like, all mixed in. And now that it's all mixed in very well using the beater, um, I'm going to gradually put in five and a half to six cups of flour. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just gradually add it because I'm going to need to be able to knead this out so it can rise properly. So I'm going to do that, you guys. I'm going to stir this all in, gradually add my five and a half to six cups of flour, and I'll be with you in just a moment. I've put in only about four cups of flour into this, and it's looking pretty good. But I do have one cup of flour here on standby, so we'll see how it goes. And in the meantime, I'm just going to keep kneading it a little tiny bit. I have parchment paper here, just so it doesn't stick to my countertop. And it makes for much easier cleaning afterwards. I had kneaded this here for about eight to ten minutes on the parchment paper just to make sure that everything was mixed in properly and now that it's in the bowl I'm gonna put my clean tea towel over the top I'll move the camera down so you can see my mom used to do this when she made bread she would um, make bread like this and put it in the bowl so it can rise. And then she'd put a clean tea towel 
over the top and then set it aside. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to rise. So while it's doing that, um, I'm going to tidy up my countertop, put some things away. And uh, once this has risen to the proper size, I will get right back to you guys. So I'll see you guys shortly. I'm back. It's been one and a half hours that I've let the bread dough rise and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It looks very good. As you can see, it has doubled in size, which is exactly what we want. And now our next step is to divide this by three and put it into three bowls. So there's three bowls there. And that's the next step. As you can see, I have the bread dough in the three bowls. And now what I have to do is just like before, put my clean tea towel over the top of the bowl. And if I need to get a second tea towel to help cover everything, then I will. So we're going to have to wait a little while again. I'm just covering them over. There we go. I'll put my flour over here because I used this earlier, as you saw, to keep my hands from sticking to the dough. So I'm going to set that over there because we're going to need it again. And um, again, I'm going to wait just a little bit and I'll be seeing you guys back here shortly. I'm back. It's been an hour. So let's take a look at where we're at with the bread dough. Um, first of all, before I show you, I want to let you know that I put margarine in this pan here. I'm going to be making some rolls and putting them in this pan. Also, I have my, my loaf pan here to, to, so I can make a loaf of bread. So that has margarine in it also. As well, I have this here greased with margarine as well. Um, I'm going to make more rolls and put the rolls in here because I intend to freeze some of them. So this will be good. I'll have plenty of rolls. <laughs> so now I want to show you the bread dough. So let's take a look. We'll take this tea towel off so you can get a good idea of the size here. And that has doubled in size and in bowl number two it has doubled in size and in bowl number three oops caught there that has doubled in size so i'm just going to tackle one bowl at a time and knead them so i can make some rolls and some bread.
right, so I have my rolls all done here. And I needed to get an extra bread, <laughs> an extra bread pan. I said bed pan. Oh, an extra, <laughs> an extra bread pan. And so I'm going to let that rise, um, double in size. And this will be the last time that the bread and the rolls have to rise. So I will get my tea towels, cover them over, and I will see you guys soon. Hi there, I'm back again. It's been an hour and 45 minutes, and I've been keeping an eye on the rolls and the bread. I wanted to make sure that they were double in size before I put them in the oven. If you were to put your bread and your rolls in the oven when they're not quite double in size, they could come out as hard as a rock. So that is why it's important to make sure that they rise to the proper size before cooking them in the oven. So I'm going to show you what they look like right now. All right, so this will be the last time I take the tea towels off. There we go, I'll take those off. So you can get a look. Yes, that looks good. That one looks good. And if it looks a little deformed, that's okay. <laughs> It'll all balance out once it's in the oven. The rolls look nice. And those rolls look nice too. So the next thing on my agenda is to turn the oven on to 375. And that's where I have it right now. And I've moved the oven rack just a little bit higher so that it's not right in the middle of the oven, but it's a little bit higher because I don't want the bottom of the bread and the bottom of the rolls to cook faster than the middle and the, and the top part of the bread and the rolls. So it takes a little bit of strategy, I know, but that's okay. We're almost near the finish line. Um, like I said, the oven's on at 375 and it takes one hour to bake everything in the oven. So let's get to it. I just put them in the oven. I just wanted you to get a little bit of a look before I close the oven door. My rolls and my bread are done and I want to show you what they look like. They turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Let's take a look. So I'm happy with how they turned out, but I really want to do a taste test, which I'm looking forward to, of course. I have to admit though, it's been a little while since I've made these. A little while meaning a few years. So I'm really looking forward to trying them again. All right, now I'm gonna try it. Hmm. Look at that turned out really good. And I hope that maybe someday you guys might try it too. It took a little while, but that's okay. It was a lot of fun to make these. And then, of course, my loaf of bread too. I'm just going to wait a little bit before I cut this. That'll taste really nice um, for breakfast, like as toast. Put some marmalade on it. Or it'll taste nice with supper too. So yes, it took a little bit of time, but it was well worth it. Uh, it was well worth it. I was really looking forward to making um, the brown bread and the brown rolls. I was really looking forward to doing that. I've been wanting to do it for a while now. So today was the day. And I'm really glad that you could join me and just 
keep me company. It's great to have your company. If you like this vlog, please give me the old YouTube thumbs up or press the subscribe button. That would be great. And I have more vlogs to come, so you guys stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon. Take care and have a really nice night. Bye.